Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to go through the process of performing least squared fitting of real experimental data. I have some example experimental data here for a parallel reaction mechanism. Uh, here's the reaction scheme over here where reactant A in a first order process is transformed into re uh, product B and parallel to that, reactant A in a first order process is transformed to product C. So this is a parallel first order mechanism. The integrated rate laws for this process are known. Uh, here is the concentration of A as a function of time. Here is the concentration of species B as a function of time. And here is the concentration of species C as a function of time. So here's the reaction scheme and then the three integrated rate laws for this process. The data and the figure are actual experimental data um, uh, and, and the figure representing that data. So here are uh, my columns A. This is uh, the different time values. B shows the concentration of species A, the concentration of species B, and the concentration of species C. And those have been graphed over here uh, in this particular plot. Okay, what we're going to do first is define our model function that we want to fit this data with. So let's just choose kind of arbitrarily to fit uh, the gray curve here. That would be the concentration of species C. So I'm going to title our model function, model function for the concentration of C. Now, looking over here, uh, that would be this function here. There are uh, three variables we need to type in. We have the rate constant for process C, the rate constant for process B, and the concentration of species A initial. So I'm going to type those in here. So this is KB is equal to, uh, KC is equal to, and the concentration of A initial is equal to, and I'm going to type in just really just randomly some numbers to hold the place over here. I'm going to guess the concentration of A is 0.1 initially. And if I look at the graph, that's what it's going to be. The units of these would be seconds to the negative one, seconds to the negative one, and molar. Seconds to the negative one because they're both first order processes. Uh, molar because that's the initial concentration of A. So let's go over here in the, and in the command line, we will define the function that is the model function for the concentration of C that's given over there in the table. Uh, let's start out by typing in, uh, it would be KC divided by the sum of KB plus KC. So I've simply typed in this term in the expression here. I'm going to go through and add dollar signs to all of the terms. The dollar signs in Excel mean that when I drag this box and fill in the rest of the function, it is not going to move where it's calling those values from. So I want these boxes that are highlighted here to always be the rate constant values. I don't want it to move down to the subsequent boxes, so I use dollar signs. The next term is A naught here. Uh, again, I'm going to use dollar signs because that is a constant and I should not move it down. Mul um, parentheses one minus exponential operator. Uh, negative one times the sum of the rate constants, KB plus KA. Again, I'm going to use dollar signs so those don't move. Multiplied by the last variable there is T. So I'm going to go over here and click on my time value and make sure that I have enough parentheses and that should be good. So this expression up here in the command line is this expression here. Notice that my last variable time, I didn't use dollar signs for because I want to calculate it for this time and then this time and this time and this time and this time as I drag the function down. So let's hit enter. I'm going to drag this down. It should auto populate 
and we'll drag it all the way to the bottom. So this should be the model function for the concentration of C. And let's graph it on here and see how close it looks to um, the function of C right now. So I'm gonna define the series name. The X values are going to be over here, simply my time values. And the Y values are the model function I just defined. Hit OK. Great. So there we are. Notice that the yellow line that just appeared, the yellow function, let me increase this. The yellow function uh, doesn't really fit it very well right now. So let's go in and, and we'll just manually change these rate constants. It looks like they need to be larger numbers. And let's see if we can get it to look better. Yeah, it's looking a little bit better. Okay, so there are, that's our initial guess. Um, it still doesn't look great. Let me just change this back to one. Yeah, so still not great. This orange line should fit the gray line. Um, and you could guess and move these values all you want. The point of the video today is actually to use the um, solver function here. Um, to minimize the value of chi squared or chi squared and uh, find the best solution. So let's not let's not guess too much in terms of the numbers. Let's let the algorithm do it for us. Okay. Uh, a few things I want to point out here is notice that this is real experimental data. So there's a time zero here where the experiment starts, but there's also a bunch of time here before the experiment actually starts. And this is kind of, if you could imagine you had your reactants before you squirted them together, there's some time while the instrument is running that you're gathering data, but you, ha you haven't actually initiated the reaction yet. So um, that is shown here. See how this goes so far negative and there's a little bit of time before zero. You may have to go in and kind of select out what data to fit the computer doesn't know what it's supposed to do. You have to tell it exactly which data to fit to the model function. Okay, let's go through and we have our model function. Let's define our residuals. And the residuals are the difference between the model function and the experimental data there and there. Notice that I started the residuals after time zero. I don't want to fit I don't want to fit the data before the experiment actually starts. So I'm starting my residuals column down here. I'm going to drag a few. If you double click on the little box like I just did, it should fill all the way to the bottom. Those should be our residuals. Let's also define our residuals squared. You could easily do residuals and residuals squared in the same uh, command line. I'm just doing it one step at a time to make it clear what the steps are. So now we've defined our model function residuals and residuals squared. Next, we should define the sum of uh, the residuals squared or chi squared. That should be the sum, S-U-M, of all the square of the res residuals. So I'm gonna highlight this whole column here. Close parentheses, and then just multiply this by a huge number. The reason for that is um, when the algorithm is, is searching through the uh, chi-squared surface, 
sometimes that surface gets really small. So we just multiply it by a big number. So the algorithm is jumping on a big surface. Um, that wasn't a very good explanation, but just go ahead and multiply it by a big number. I'm going to change this text color just be, that way it's easier to see. Okay, we're getting close to being able to fit the data. Notice again, here's our model function in orange. We want it to fit the gray data. It's not very close um, and we could change these parameters a little bit more, but let's let the algorithm do it for us. I'm going to click on data here and I want the solver add-on. I want to minimize, notice I'm clicking min here, chi squared. So the objective, I'm setting it here for chi squared. So it's I six in my Excel sheet. I want to minimize that. And I want to minimize it by changing the variables of the different rate constants. It's probably good practice to do one rate constant, then another, and kind of toggle back and forth before you solve them both at the same time. So let's see how that works. So let's minimize that. Okay, and oh, look, Excel minimized chi-squared, this value right here, and it has a much better guess than we had initially. Let's try that one more time and let's minimize KC. Go back here. I'm going to minimize KC this time. Oh, and it's a better guess also. Notice that Excel has generated new rate constant values um, and, and modified them to minimize chi-squared. Let's go back to the solver. Let's do both. Now that we've minimized the two rate constants independently, let's do them at the same time. And notice I used a semicolon for that. Well, maybe that's incorrect. Maybe it's a comma. Yes, it's a comma. Ooh, that's great. Let's go back in and we'll add our a comma and we'll add our final value, this initial value. And it's excellent. So there is a best fit of the um, concentration of C as a function of time. According to the solver algorithm, the rate constant for process B is this number here. And the rate constant for process C is that number. Um, when I generated the data, I made KB uh, a million and KC three million per second. So Excel doesn't get the exact number, but that's pretty close um, in terms of the algorithm optimizing chi-squared. Okay, the next thing you could do for this data set would be to fit uh, the graph for the concentration of B and then the concentration of A and just confirm that you get the same rate constants. That would be kind of the rigorous way to do that. All right, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.